Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, RSF One's weekly podcast. Uh, we've been away for a couple of weeks due to several things, um, but we're back this time. And uh, for those of you that haven't seen this before or heard of this before, this is our weekly review of the races just gone. Um, and it was a quite, quite entertaining week around uh, Austria. Um, took obviously attention away from everything else on the outside, or I hope it did. It did for me anyway. Um, unfortunately, I didn't race this week due to due to connection and Xbox having these issues. But there you go. Uh, the others will be back in F two. Yeah, this is this is going to be me. Um, Verstappen is currently doing something, but he'll be back. Um, very shortly. He is with me here tonight, but he will be be back soon for uh, his review of F3. Coming in. So, uh, my name is Arisa from and I hope you can enjoy the, well, the informa information given to you. So let's begin underway. Um, as always, in the background is just time trial, just background footage, um, just so you have something to see while we talk about. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all good. And um, just to give you a format of what's going on this week, we have a bit of news to tell you. Hang on a minute. Beams down a bit. I don't know why. Let's have a look. Let me just let's search this for a second. Sorry, just gonna have it in the background for myself. There we go, it's working now for me. Perfect, so yeah, we have a bit of news to tell you about. Um, and then we've got the review of the races to do. Um, so we'll be starting off with Tier 4, then going to Tier 1, Tier 5, and then ending off with Tier 3. And if we have some time at the end, we'll be looking at the next uh, track, which is Silverstone. Okay, so... Let's begin with the news, and of course, last weekend we um, didn't do a podcast, obviously, because uh, for those of you that saw in the league, league announcements, myself, Verstappen, Raikkonen, and Salted Helmet uh, took part in a Sebring 12-hour event on Forza Motorsport 7, to something a little separate. Um, I saw you guys did... Um, support us and watch our first few stints so i've got to say a thank you very much for all the support that was given we did persevere it's safe to say we had our issues um raikkonen and myself had a couple of disconnections so we lost a good bit of mileage from that because it was based on distance rather than uh, positions it's just the way it was working um, but in the end, we covered 1,147 miles, which is 382 laps. And in the end, we did get 23rd out of 25, which doesn't seem good on the outset. But as I said, we had issues. And without those issues, we would have been 17th. So that's that. So I hope that is a good enough result. I know... You know, technology and issues weren't very good, so which means we actually were 25th, but 17th, etc, etc. It was an experience exercise, and it is something which, obviously with the committee's position, we could do some in the future. Um, they are, with the group that they sort of run it, it's like one every two months or one every month or so. Um, and I believe, rumour as rumor has it, that the next one is Spa. Spa six hours. There are obviously bigger ones like Le Mans 24 hours and stuff like that. But again, committee's position will be more interest. I know there were other people that wanted to join us. Um, but there will be more on the horizon. So keep up to date with that if you want to do something a little extra. As I said, they were fun to do. Um, but it was, yeah, it was good fun. Um, the other bit of news uh, to tell you is the recruitment center. So recruitment 
as you'll know or as you can all see from week in week out we have new names coming in and it is always good to see new names on the grid it shows that the league is still expanding we're still accepting to new um new members as well as returning ones um of course if they want to have some time out and break the door is always open to come back in unless you uh <coughs> did anything naughty of course the door will be slammed shut but um yeah it's good to see new faces coming in and recruitment has had a little bit of a, a little bit of, not a shake up but a sort of a it's now more organized um, there's now a completely different server which every new driver to the league goes into and then they go through a scheduled process before they're allowed into the main discord so they are first of all tested their connection as we know what that's like for everybody else around you do not want to have a laggy person so we always test their connection and then we have a person that approves that connection to see whether it was good enough then they have to read through the rule book and then they have to tick to make sure that they have or to tell us that they've read it of course it's that thing of um they can tick it and say that they've read it but we've got to trust them so there's that they are then put through a pace test to find out what tier they should be in and then they're allowed into the main discord so we hope uh that obviously sounds a lot better for everyone um and to assure people that every new driver they are put through the motions um it was set up by rsf ron schumacher who is uh no longer admin role for those that you know and he will be missed with his role because he was very uh good what he did he is still racing um thank goodness for me because i do like racing against him he will be uh continuing doing that but uh yeah, he's no longer the admin oh and we were always taking a step back from that but he's still around of course um so head of recruitment i believe is shane and so and i'm part of that the staff is part of that i've also got other people as well involved so yeah you're in good hands new drivers in good hands uh evening unity evening to andrew uh andrew is that um is that andrew alpha can you say your game attack please uh everybody else um who else is watching give us a wave give us a hi Give us an evening. Um, what do you think of those two things? Obviously the Sebring and the uh, recruitment center. Or the recruitment process now. Everyone liking that. As we see in the chat. No? Okay. Oh it is Andrew Alpha. Cool. Uh, I'll give it a bit of time because I know I'm ahead of the chat so or ahead of the stream so let's give it some time um yeah so so as i said it's uh we're basically getting new members almost daily at this rate um so it's always good to expand and obviously we want to keep the numbers healthy and they are doing very much healthy at the moment so, um so far so good so good stuff reef uh, good evening to you patronus good evening to you uh, regular viewers of the podcast so thank you again for watching um, and I think I think that's it in terms of the news um, yeah as I said all is good uh, Sebring was fun there'll be more more events on the horizon including Le Mans 24 hours etc etc and the new recruitment process so hopefully you enjoy that so let's get things under way so let's start obviously uh sadly we never got to race f2 which was disappointing um as you guys know xbox had a huge meltdown on that on sunday night um the race was postponed and then later cancelled altogether so like most of the sport around um at this uh difficult time uh we were no, we were no go so and austria i believe the announcement has been made that austria will not be rerun so unfortunately f2 will not have the pleasure of coming around this wonderful wonderful track and i am very sad about that personally but there you go um yeah so yeah so we skip over f2 and obviously they will be uh hopefully fingers crossed 
no issues tomorrow night and Silverstone is the next track for them and of course we will look at Silverstone if we have time. So we go straight to F4 on the Monday and of course myself and um, Top Notch were well, fingers crossed that it weren't any issues like the night previously and fortunately enough there were no issues. Um, a few laggy issues but in terms of servers we were fine, thank goodness. Uh, so 16 racers took to the track for F4 on Monday and it was Connor Todd who got the pole position of 104.817 in the racing point. He was joined on the front row, kind of surprisingly, uh, by Tennis in the Ferrari. He uh, had a very, very strong qualifying, definitely his strongest so far this season. Um, Quaker was third uh, in the Red Bull ahead of Blazer in fourth. Uh, Tom the Ecomaniac was 5th with Daniel 6th, Scotsman 7th, Vinny 8th, Primus 9th and Bodda making a, an appearance in the top 10, he ended up in 10th place. Uh, so the race began and it was a full wet start, it was absolutely dripping it, yeah dripping is not the word, teaming it, teaming it down, that's the word I'm going to use, teaming. It was... Yeah, it was full wet, kind of monsoon conditions for the start of the F4 race. A very, very tricky start, but it was a very clean first few corners. Um, so obviously you've got to give a very big shout out to F4 for that. Anybody F4 in the chat? Um, very good first few corners, so congratulations to that in the full wet. Um... And then we began with the first lap. Uh, after lap one, Connor still led, but uh, Tom had had a great start. Tom the Ecomaniac in the Tour Rosso had a great start up to second. Uh, Tennis was third, had a Quaker. Daniel, Vinny, Primus, Scotsman, Blazer. Uh, actually, no, Blazer pitted, unfortunately, because he had a rough first lap. Got damage, pitted, and when he came out of the pits, he actually retired on the straight leading up to turn three. Um, hi for Stappen, or Ben, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for uh, joining me tonight. Um, just before we carry on with Tier 4, a um, couple of things. Sebring 12 Hour, I know you had a bit of a difficult experience, but it was your first endurance race in a while. Just a quick mention about that. Um, how was your experience on that, in that race? I know we had our difficulties, but it was still... Still fun, wasn't it? Yeah, apart from the two restarts, I was 0.7 off what I wanted to achieve, so I was happy with the mileage and what we did, so let's hope we can do bigger and better things in the future. Yeah, of course it's just something different, isn't it, other than F1, you know, it's a different type of racing, so it's all about concentration and... Yeah, it was good. Um, what about the uh, recruitment process now? Obviously, I didn't, don't have any reaction um, in the chat about that yet, but it's a lot more organised now. There was definitely no stone unturned in terms of new drivers coming in. Um, there's nothing we're not missing out now, is there? No, it's an actual process in a different Discord server now, which helps because it separates from all the other chats and obviously in the main school so we've got over a hundred odd people in it so it's good to have a separate focus with recruitment and uh, yeah it's good so far yep and of course we may see a few of these new names uh, this week this week coming up uh, Ben so it should be good to see what they can do first impressions are always everything yep that's the key to any league you join for the first time so no pressure on the new recruits Okay, uh, Reefer missed the recruitment, I said, or the recruitment process, I said. So just to summarise a little bit, uh, the recruitment now is put onto a separate server. Uh, so they have to go through a recruitment server first before they're even allowed into the main Discord that you guys lovingly chat day in and day out about all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, they had to go through a recruitment server before they do that. Um, the very first thing is they have a connection test to see whether their connection is good enough, their speeds are fine so they don't lag too much. Uh, then they have to read the rule book. then they have to do a pace test uh, with time trial um, and a couple of other things as well um, before they're then approved, move forward 
suggested a tier that they should go into and that's then they're then sent into the main discord so that summarizes that up briefer hopefully that's good for you um yeah so back to tier four uh, did you watch tier four actually by the way ben um i did not no unfortunately any call ah so this of bits ah so this will be good for you then i can summarize it for you so uh so end of the first lap came through uh blazer unfortunately retired up to turn three uh blaze uh, i don't know if you kept over the championship ben but blazer has had the worst luck since he won baku um he scored no points i think in about four or five weeks now we've been there where nothing seems to go right he's just got to keep persevering because he definitely has the pace doesn't he just not getting the rub the rub of the green yeah. I was going to say you didn't finish that saying off. That sounded weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't get a rub. Hmm. Um, yeah, kind of a situation I'm in, to be honest. Just getting no luck whatsoever, but perseverance and you should get the odd podiums and odd wins with this pace. Yeah, definitely do not count him out. That's, that's the one thing I would say. And definitely don't give up, Blazer, if you're watching this back. It's definitely not um, anything that you're doing. Um, I went through it last season seven i think seven or eight races with no points um when i was in a contention of a championship but yeah we go through it um so end of lap two a uh, virtual safety car came out because of blazer's retirement uh, nobody pitted uh because of it because it was full wet conditions at that point um only change was quaker was now up to third ahead of tedist so the drivers carried on until uh, the next incident was on lap 6 and at this point the track was drying up. There was start to be, be in a drying line, possibly intermediate tyres. Um, so Primus, who at this point was around about 7th or 8th, pitted for intermediate tyres. And at the point I thought that was another wrong call, but he obviously maybe got the call from uh, the in-game Jeff. So he decided to bit for Inters. Um, as he did so, there was a still an incident I still think kind of weird between Daniel and Tedist. I still to this day don't know what happened. Just on stream you see them nose to nose um, at the end of turn 8 before the last two corners. They were nose to nose and on the racing line. Kachal coming up behind them uh, couldn't avoid them and hit them wiping out all three on the spot so obviously safety car comes out because of it and again i have no idea how tedist and daniel ended up nose to nose still ridiculous um so yeah all three of them were unfortunately out which brings out the safety car uh under the safety car tom the eco maniac gets a drive through penalty for speeding under the safety car and uh, we'll get to why that's relevant in a minute um, but after the safety car came out, Connor still led ahead of Tom uh, before his drive through. Quaker moved up to second with Tom's drive through. Koala was in third, but he was still on wet tyres. Kind of a chance in it. Um, eventually, he had to pit because it was intermediate tyres at this point. So that meant Primus, with his good. Uh, start to the race was now up to third ahead of Glock uh, the new um, driver Grunt Tastrophe and uh, Bodder is up into that point as well uh, lap 13 uh, as I said Primus was up to third Tom was eighth after his penalty and then started recover lap 26 um, the drivers kept on going from 13 to 26 but it's 26 when the uh it was starting to become dry um and th at this point connor todd who was leading decided to pit for dry tires now i don't know if you know my sort of rule about um a drying track or a mixed condition ben but i have a saying with with it you need to act not react if you're leading or near the front it's the ones at the back that take the gamble on changing tires is that something that um that you know about or you you think the same um 
Um, I, yeah, as you said, if you're at the front and changing conditions, you won't be reacting because you're not reacting to anyone ahead of you. You're not going to have a chance to gain the advantage. In fact, you've got more of a chance in getting a disadvantage, so it's just trying to persevere and hoping your tactics work. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so what I what I mean also is um, if you're at the front, you wait for the others to pit yourself rather than um, you're one of the first. But Connor was one of the first, and it ended up actually being the right call, saying after all that. Uh, which meant he got a bit of advantage on Quaker, who at this point was keeping up with him. Uh, so with two laps to go, Connor and Quaker were battling. And, uh, but into turn seven, Connor went sideways. And at this point, they were less than a second in between each other. Uh, because Connor went sideways midway through turn seven, that middle sector, long left-handers, uh, Quaker saw the gap went for the lunge. Unfortunately, on the exit of those long corners in the middle sector, oh, it's just coming up to it, coming up to them now, uh, the corner narrows up and the racing line is very difficult to go side by side. Um, and he tapped the side of corner and spun and unfortunately his battle for the win ended there. As I said, always go for the gap, uh, Ben, but at this point yeah, that, that corner, it does now up, and it was opportunistic. And I think when he looks back, and they, they were very gentlemen about it, which is all good to see and hear. Connor and Quaker, they were perfectly fine. They shook hands virtually. Although you can't really do that now, can you? Um, but no, he, um, he was the quicker of the two at the point. I think looking back, he'll think to himself, I could have waited for the straight. But then again... You don't go for the gap, you're not a racing driver then, I guess is the saying. Yeah, the specific moments and certain times when you can go for moves dependent on the style and angle of certain corners. Um, I mean, yeah, as you said, if you're not, you're not a racing driver, you don't go for it. But at the end of the day, you need to have your wits about you and have that composure under pressure. But it's living mm -hmm. and learning, I guess, in F1. Yeah, of course. Um, there was a contact, as you said this week, in the F3 stream, I'll do it properly. Yeah. CONTACT! There we go. None of yeah. this. Yeah, that's contact. better. That's better. Drone. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, but that incident, unfortunately, that uh, ended the battle. Would have been interesting to see what would have happened on the very last lap, but it was uh, Connor who came through to take his first win of the season, first win since joining RSF1. Uh, second was Quaker Oates did uh, recover from that spin and finished in second. Uh, Tom Nierko Maniac third continued his consistency in the Toro Rosso. Fourth was Primus, and yeah, I forgot to mention Primus. Um, in that phase from intermediates to dries, there was a moment where you had a choice to make. Do you pit for an extra set of intermediates? Because at this point, they're on like 18, 19 laps, most of them. And it was a case of, do you keep on those intermediates till dry tyres? And of course, Primus had pitted early for those intermediate tyres. He apparently was at 91% wear on those tyres when he pitted for dries. Now, norm normally, Ben, it's normally around about 75, 80% that you get punctures. How he had, hadn't got a puncher there, I have no idea. 91%. The, the F1 gods were with him, it looks like. Certainly was. Certainly was. And they rewarded him with a fourth place in the Mercedes, so good result. Uh, Vinny in the Williams was fifth. Uh, Bodder sixth. Wobbles in the Ferrari seventh. Junior in the race point eighth. Scotsman ninth. And Koala picks up a point for McLaren. A much needed point. Coming into the uh, points, which I'll briefly go through. Um, now, so with that result, obviously, Stuart depending, etc. You know, you know this by now. Um, don't know why I keep repeating it, but just in case, just to cover ourselves. Um, Cuddy obviously missed that race. That was the biggest story from F4 that he missed Austria, so his lead has been cut to nothing. As he's on 109, Quaker Oates is on 109. The two Red Bull drivers 
equal points at the top. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Tom is third at the moment on 87 points after that podium in Austria. Then a bit of a gap to a titanic midfield battle. So you got Daniel on 59, Connor on 59, Raikkonen 56, Bodder up to 52, Scotsman 50, Kachal 49, Primus up to 48. It's a big close battle in that um, kind of fourth to ninth place there, Ben. Um, obviously, as I said, the two rebel drivers are equal points. Uh, they might, as their teammates, um, I know he missed it because of that Patronus. Thank you for reminding me. Um, because they're teammates, Ben, do you reckon there may be a little bit of a rivalry going between them two? Potential Mercedes real life kind of thing, Hamilton Rosberg. But they potentially trip amongst themselves in um, their battle for the drivers. I don't know why you're referring to Hamilton Rosberg. Vettel Weber, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I meant a championship battle. I meant that. Oh, well, they were in one, technically. Yeah, yeah, technically. 2010. Yeah. yeah. God, your, your knowledge is shambolic, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Disappointing. Yeah, yeah, right. um, My reference was right. Yeah, but wrong team. Um, I forgot what you were saying now about rivalries. Um, yeah, it uh, depends could, on. Could Cuddy how and they Quaker. Act. Yeah, could they, could they come unstuck? And could potentially someone like Tom. Daniel, Connor Todd, could they capitalise because of it? It's still quite a we way shall to go. See. Yeah, I mean, the next few races will. Well, to be honest, the last few races, if it comes down to the wire, we'll see who goes that extra mile and who pushes harder and who doesn't give as much room, we'll see. Of course. Um, after that uh, midfield battle, it's Blaze on 41. Porter is on 30 in the Renault. Finney goes to 27, Wobbles 26. Weber 19, Junior 18, Koala on 8, and Tedist on 1 point. So, yeah, definitely a interesting championship building up very nicely in F4. And obviously they resume their stuff on Monday with me streaming and top notch. And they do the Silverstone Grand Prix Monday night at 8 o'clock. Alrighty, um, F1 shall we move on to? Right, F1 of course on the Tuesday, why did I forget what day it was? Tuesday, and I have to say, and I know there were a couple of races or racers, drivers that were unhappy after this race, I think in general Adding with the combination, I don't know if you've watched this back then, but adding with a combination of Bodder and Rebster in commentary, who just connected, like, what's what's a good thing that connects well together? A good combination. On Chalk and cheese? Camp? No. On <laughs> Why'd you have to bring in a football <laughs> reference? <laughs> Why not? Uh, the connect well. Bread and butter. Bread and butter. <laughs> Something simple as that. Yeah. They they connected so well and obviously with everything going on on the outside of this outside world, I think in general it was a good race just to sit and watch. For me, because obviously I watched it. Um, obviously you taking part in it and your luck um, or lack of luck continued. But as a whole it was a very good race. Did you watch it back? No I did not. Um, Tom in the chat says tea and biscuits. I mean, yeah. Team Biscuit, that's a good one, yeah. Um, yes, so 19 races at the track, so a very good field of turnout. I think F1 is the only tier that we don't have to worry about, because we've got, got, got about 5, 6 reserves, and about 19, 20 people turn up anyway, so at the moment, that could be, that could be the only tier, Ben, we wouldn't have to worry about at all for the rest of the season. Mm, who would have thought, eh? Um, Patronus, that's a disgusting combination. Tea and crumpets. Disgusting. <laughs> Tea and crumpets. <laughs> Jesus. Tea and crumpets. Yeah, that's a good one. Anyway, um, qualifying happened, and it was Scumburn in the Alfa Romeo that took pole position. A 104.155. Obviously, the fastest time of the week. Um, be very surprising if it was from any other tier, let's be honest. But yeah, 
104.155 pole position. Uh, he was joined in the front row with Unity Hush in the Ferrari. Karun was third. Pigeon Munch fourth. Rhombus uh, capped off a very good qualifying for the Ferrari team. Yes. Uh, Mansell was next in the Renault with Vettel, his teammate, behind him. Eighth was Dyslexic in the Mercedes. Had a, a difficult qualifying in Q3 anyway, and despite topping Q1. Uh, Gary was ninth, and then you rounded up the top 10, Ben. So, in terms of qualifying, made it to Q3. Um, were you disappointed with that? I, I know yeah. you invalidated <laughs> one of the laps, didn't you? I would have got third. <laughs> Story of my season. Yeah, still a long way to go, though. So, your time will come, I'm sure. Um, we rounded up the top 10. Uh, one... 0 0.155 um you had a full three in that invalidated lap didn't you so all one what do you think of that lap very impressive well i don't expect anything less from skunk burner i mean his tactics in quality confuse me but they seem to work for him so keep doing it mate you're doing well <laughs> yes uh so the race began and uh it was a dry race uh, different to F4, obviously, which Unity Hush, by the way, he's desperate for rain, even a, just a drop of rain in F1, because they haven't even had a single session. You need to drink uh, some water, then. There you go. Yeah. Uh, they haven't had a single session, qualifying or race, whereas uh, it's been raining. It's very, very disappointing, isn't it? I think every tier has had rain at some point, just F1 hasn't had it. Maybe they'll get it this week. Mm. But we'll see. Uh, dry race, and it was a very, very clean, ultra clean first lap. Nobody pitted, and from what I checked, nobody had damage either. So, yeah, very well done. What you expect from the top tier <coughs> in RSF1. Um, but what did happen on the first lap, uh, Gary unfortunately had a jump start, so he, uh, where was he in that? He's, he was in ninth, so that dropped him to the back. And Dyslexic had a very weird lag start. I don't know whether you saw that, Ben, but he dropped from wherever he was. He was 8th at the time, dropped to the back as well. So, weird thing to happen, but they happen from time to time, I guess. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, and the first lap ended. Skug, Hush, and Karun, the top three, uh, all on mediums, by the way. So there was a bit of a uh, tyre strategy going on with the rest of the drivers, with all the drivers there. Uh, Pigeon, Mansell and Vettel in that top 10 were all on soft tyres, so a little bit of difference there. Um, what was the strategy going in it for you, Ben? Um, obviously you'd seen the couple of races before, though a bit tricky, because obviously we didn't have F2, which is normally a good reference point for everybody in the whole of the league, and of course F4 was a wet race, so did you know the strategy going into it, or was it a difference? I knew it from past races in last season and other leagues I've done. Um, medium to soft was the better. But due to certain incidents and scenarios with different drivers, <laughs> didn't really work for mm -hmm. me. Yes, of course. I was going to get to that as well, because that's my next point. Um, lap 4, uh, you had an incident and spun at turn 10. Dropping to the back. Um, we'll gloss over that, shall we? We've, we've talked yeah. enough about it. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, VLC Dan, haven't been for F3 yet. F3 will be at the end. It's in so, order, Dan. Mm -hmm. it? Yes, and it's an actual tier order as you as you watch it during the week. Um, so, by lap four, uh, the top five were separated by two seconds. This was Skunk, Hush, Karun, Pigeon and uh, Mansell. Uh, top five separated by two seconds, which is great to see, great battling between there. Uh, uh, Pigeon was actually up to third ahead of Karun, trying to make those soft tyres work. Um, lap six, um, the two teammates of Renault, Vettel and Mansell, decided to, well, go hammer and tongue on the battle. Um, again, entertaining to, entertaining for watch, but I can imagine Shane, who is very attached to Renault this season, 
Um, he does help all the drivers out, as do many of others. Um, I can imagine he wasn't too best pleased watching those two drivers battle the way they did. They very nearly collided several times. But, uh, yeah, but with that, um, I'm going to go to lap 11. And at this point, Dyslexic, who, remember, had that very horrible lag, lag that put him out to the back, was now fourth. Incredible recovery, obviously, um, through that. And it just it just shows, Ben, doesn't it, that uh, Dyslexic has the weight. Done it a few times this season where he's had a tough start or a tough qualifying, but he always seems to bring it back. Um, and that's what you need to do in the championship, don't it? You need know, to uh, damage the limitation, and he definitely was on it um, this week, wasn't he? Yeah, I know he's one of the front runners in F1. Um, yeah, had a, an issue on the formation lap with his internet. Got back in past turn one, two at the start, and then just made his way through. So, yeah, that helps his title fight, I guess. Yeah, certainly does. Uh, uh, on the other hand, as well, Rumbus uh, was dropping back, and he was in ninth at this point in the Ferrari. So he was trying to get up to pace with the race. Uh, lap 15, uh, Vettel and Zizu had an unfortunate collision at turn four. Uh, we didn't catch it on the stream, but uh, very unfortunate for Vettel, who did have a good race up until that point, and he then dropped to the back. Uh, lap 18 was an incident that you caught a little bit of, which was uh, Gunther retiring on the last corner. Seemed that he kind of lost it on the curbs in the last corner, didn't he? And just uh, hit the wall on the inside. Uh, those curbs, especially the last corner, Ben, uh, very, very difficult to sort of recover if you hit that really hard. Especially if you're on no traction, which majority of F1 drivers are on, I believe. Um, very difficult. So, yes, um, unfortunate incident for Gunther there, wasn't it? Um, no comment. <laughs> I know you think otherwise. I know you think otherwise what you saw, but still. No, I, um, I, I stream my POV of the races from Canada onwards. Um, I say I saw something. Obviously, you lost it on the curb, and then we'll leave it at that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but that brought out the virtual safety car at this point. And this meant that a few drivers decided to pit and change their strategy going forward. Uh, lap 22, Rhombus uh, spun on turn 3, another very difficult corner. Even on, um, I run medium traction by the way, because I'm not full traction. I'm not off traction guy yet, just to say. Yeah, um, but even on. Yeah, I know. Even on medium traction, uh, for that turn three, the exit is very, very difficult to control, isn't it? But you run no traction, so it's even more worse. Um, it's not worse when you get used to it, but obviously if you transition from medium to no traction, then yeah, it's just dependent on setup and how you take the lines and gears and corners. And it is one of the trickier corners of the track, yeah, I guess. Evening, Junior, in the chat. Good to see you. A good evening. Uh, or good to... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was Rhombus uh, spinning to turn three. Uh, he dropped outside the top ten with that. So, the situation occurred on lap 23. Obviously, I said many people on different strategies. You had uh, Skunt Burner, who was still leading at this point. And up until this point, he was under huge pressure from Unity Hush, who did everything in his power try overtake. The gap pretty much stayed at around about a second pretty much the entirety of that race, even through the pit stops at this point. Um, so yeah, very good battle between the two of them. Uh, Pigeon was in between them at this point on the medium tyres. Uh, obviously the recovering dyslexic was there as well in fourth. Then a bit of a gap to the battling Karun, who uh, I've got to mention he pitted very early on, around about that four, because he had damage. Pitted for hard tyres, and he was still on those hard tyres at this point. But obviously the hard tyres, Ben, as me and you both know, they run f almost forever, so it's the only strategy Karun could do, so he had a good recovery up to that point. But behind him, he had Skadoosh, both Red Bulls of Ozer and Easton, and No Shoals, 
on soft tyres, hunting him down. So, <laughs> difficult situation for Karun. Um, obviously, he had to pit early, as I said, because of the damage. And uh, he really had to show his defensive qualities in that, uh, in that battle. It's, again, I don't know whether you've been in that situation when you're on two compounds, harder tyres, and you've got like a train of hungry cars behind you. It's very difficult to control. He did a, did a relatively good job, though. Yeah, he did. Um, I think he's probably one of the quickest pad drivers I know who run no traction. Um, as you said, it's difficult when you're on two compound, harder tyres, especially on Austria, when it's most effective being on the softest. Um, and he used his skills and... Uh, was wise in positioning when defending, so, yeah. Yeah, so it was very good. Um, <clears throat> and then the last few laps came and went. As I said, we had the top four battle, and then the fifth to eighth battle as well, and then out, outside the, or to the edge of the outside the points, you had yourself. We recovered quite nicely up to 10th, I must say. Uh, you were battling off Shrimper and Rhombus, uh, for the last point and uh, in the end they crossed the line and the skunk burner took his victory a very well deserved victory um, as I said under massive pressure from Hush all the way through first win but managed yeah managed to take yeah as you say his first win of the season dyslexic was second an amazing recovery drive because of that lag uh, spike at the beginning uh, third was Unity Hush in the Ferrari. Pigeon fourth. The Rosso Eastern had a very good result in the Red Bull fifth. Ahead of Karun. Karun damage limitation for him in sixth place. Uh, Skadoosh was seventh in the other Mercedes. Ozza in eighth. Ninth Rhombus. And then yourself Ben picked up the last point. Of the. Of the race. And quickly go through the championship what that does uh unity hush now has a two point lead over dyslexic uh hush 155 dyslexic 153 skunk burner with that win now goes on to 123 so he's definitely still in the title fight as is karim despite that difficult race he's still got good points despite everything he's on 112 then a bit of a gap to pigeon on 61 Ozza 42 eastern 39 devil 34 Gary 31, no shells 29, Skadoosh 26, Lando 19, Verstappen 18, Vettel and Rombus 12, Mansell 8, John Digby 2, and Mexizu on 2. So good stuff in F1. Um, seems to me, and we said this like a few weeks ago, it seems to me it's a four horse race really. Hush, Dyslexit, Skunk, and Karun. Still at this stage, difficult to say who's going to come out on top between those four, Ben, isn't it? I already pretty much know who's going to win, I think, the title. But I'm going to keep that quiet. I've said it for a long time. I don't know how you can tell. There's still, like, 20... I can tell. How many points is it? How many I know points exa is it? I know exactly. I can 40, tell you the top 43. four, if you want. I can tell you the I top mean, by four all means, if you want, if you want, If you want to do it with about 10 races to go... By all means. So everyone will oh, look no. back and so they'll go to oh podcast Austria. Oh, this is Verstappen got it right. So no, uh, go, then. go for it. Dyslexic beats Unity to the title. And How dare you? Karun and Skunk, third and fourth. How many points separate all four? Between twenty to forty points. Oh, 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 going down to the last race. So you, you've heard it here first, everyone. Going down to the last race, I presume. Uh, yes. Okay. I'm not going to take any offence that you didn't didn't pick my Fer my Ferrari uh, Ferrari teammate to win it, and you decided to pick a Mercedes, even though you're McLaren. So mm. I have season no, one fine. loyalties. Your opinion. <laughs> Your opinion. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, F1, fantastic stuff. And again, they will kick things off once again on Tuesday. Right. F5, which was on the Wednesday. 19 races took the, to the track on Wednesday night. 
and it was Jay Locker in the Red Bull who qualified in pole position a 105.057 um, very good lap from Jay Locker um, I believe his second or maybe third pole it might only be a second pole after Australia the very first round so uh, could return to four for Jay Locker uh, Cosmic Cameron in the Ferrari was second with uh, Cicero Clark in third uh, then it was Kazi and Kenzie and I cannot believe we're in the situation in F5 where both Renaults are Kazi Babe and Kenzie Retro. Mm. How's that happened? Has nobody else noticed that? Um, yeah, great stuff. Uh, Eagle was next with Albon uh, after that. Seventh was Button, Fistix eighth, and Mac Jason. No, sorry, Button eighth, Fistix ninth, Mac Jason tenth. Um, so the race began and the race ended unfortunately before the first corner for Rebster. Um, very unfortunate incident for Rebster, uh, though he, uh, he wasn't very keen on Austria. I remember him uh, telling me that before he started, but still, um, yeah, didn't make the first corner. Don't know what happened and still to this day do not know what happened either. Uh, but difficult, difficult for Rebster and um, he was out. Uh, three wide between the three at the front. Locker, Cosmic and um, Clark into turn three. Um, so yeah, great battling between everyone. Uh, Kenzie in the Renault lunged in turn four on the three leaders. Unfortunately made con contact um, with them and spun round. Uh, that's my worst attempt of it. And he spun round to the back. Um, lap three, top two are pushing away. Uh, Lock, J Locker, and Clark. Um, Clark who got ahead of Cosmic Cameron after the first lap. Uh, solid to challenge J Locker. That both of them were pushing away, and then we had a train from third to thirteenth. After Jesus. that, uh, yeah, Cosmic Cameron um, all the way back to thirteenth. Um, that was until lap four. Kazi Babe in the Renault was up to third. Uh, as well as Eagle, so they both got ahead of Cosmic. Uh, Fishstix then tried to get past Cosmic Cameron, but spun on turn seven, and he then dropped to the back. Uh, lap five, um, unfortunately, the bad luck of Jay Locker. And he, you were saying about your bad luck in uh, F1, Ben. Jay Locker is having the same thing. Um, again, has shown the pace really in tier five, but cannot get the consistency right, as always. Um, having unfortunate things and he spun on the exit of turn 8 and unfortunately got wing damage and pitted came out 14th when he was battling for the lead which left Clark in the Mercedes leading the way um, again probably the same thing that running your, through your mind and probably Blazer in an F4 you just got to persevere don't you especially when you have the pace to be running at the front you just got to persevere, because it will come good eventually, won't it? Yeah, I mean, same position as me and Blazer, to be honest. Just persevere and keep practicing. Do more practices as possible. Um, yeah, just keep persevering, I guess. Yeah, certainly. Um, and then, unfortunately, we had a difficult incident on lap number 10. At this point, uh, Kenzie Retro was having a difficult race after his um, our spin on the first lap. Uh, and he was being lapped by the field by, by this point. And Zombie Head, who was, I think, about 8th or ninth at this point, had Alonso right behind. And they were battling quite ferociously at turn 8. Um, both of them came up to lap uh, Kenzie, who kind of didn't get, um, didn't read the situation correctly and um, made contact with Zombie that then veered his car off to the left where Alonso was trying to avoid the pair of them and unfortunately Alonso went straight into the wall with that and he was not very happy with that retirement. Uh, this brought out the virtual safety car uh, which meant strategy again like, uh, like F1 uh, changed and uh, Kazi who was uh, in third at this point pitted for hard tyres which ended up being a very, very good call. 
Lap 17, uh, Clark, who was leading at this point, uh, spun on the penultimate corner, or just before the penultimate corner, um, then had dirty tyres as he went into the pits, understeered straight into the wall. So he did a uh, 94 David Coulthard from Adelaide, if anybody knows that reference. <laughs> uh, hit into the pit. Do, do you know that reference? Uh, I do. <laughs> yes. Just went straight on, just going to break. Um, different different for Clark because he actually got into the pit lane but just understeered yeah. on the corner in it. So, um, yeah, he fought, unfortunately, like Locker, had the pace to win this race but retired in the pit lane. Uh, last few laps, uh, Kazi, as I said, uh, at this point, lap 26, uh, everyone had pitted. Kazi was leading the race, as I said, on those hard tyres. Um, and then it was uh, Eagle in second, Albon third with Tim and Ike, Cosmic, Orphan, Louder, and Braver Container, who was having his first race in F5, was in that order. Um, and then nothing much happened really until the very last lap, Albon and Container. Unfortunately, had an incident at turn three. Container was going for the inside move, made slight contact with Albon, and can Brave Container spun from a very good position, but unfortunately, he dropped back a couple of places. Uh, which meant that Kazi, after that inspired pit stop under the virtual safety car for hard tyres, ended up winning the race, controlling it from when he pitted to pretty much there. Uh, Eagle was second in the McLaren, with third, the meme king himself, Tim and Ike. Uh, OSF1 Louder, who had qualified, where did he qualify in this race, I cannot see, 15th, ended up 4th place. Uh, Tim and Ike also from 14th, so the pair of them had really good races. Uh, Albon was in 5th in the Mercedes, with Orford one of his best results in McLaren 6th. Brave and Contain the 7th, Cosmic Cameron 8th, Button 9th, Matt Jason 10th. The good race. In F5, uh, lots of action, and um, maybe, we go. maybe not as dramatic as the other three uh, races this week, but still very intriguing. Which meant, championship as it stands for F5, obviously Stewart depending, of course. Uh, Kazi Babe and Renault leads on 118 points with that win. Uh, Tim and Ike is second on 101, so the battle still continues there. Then we have Military Virus, who missed that race. Was on 76, Louder 75, Eagle 74. Uh, Button, still in contention, is on 64 points. Timmer 58, Locker 50. Uh, Cesar Clark 33, Zombie Head 29, Alonso 22, Webster 20. So that rivalry still continues between them two. Orphan and Albon both on 16. Cosmic Cameron 12. Brave and Container with his first points on 6. Fish sticks three, Roger Strascals one, and Matt Jason on one point. And I know I didn't mention constructors throughout a couple of the other tiers, but I will mention this one because of how close it is. So I mentioned this to you, Ben, uh, before we went live. So this is the situation in F5 constructors. Renault leads on 120, then it's racing point on 102. Then we go to McLaren on 90, Ferrari 87, Alfa Romero 86, Red Bull 79, Toro Rosso 78. For those mathematicians out there, that's eight teams with 42 points separated all of them. That's ridiculous. Uh, don't, don't, think I've, don't think I've ever heard that much of a... Or well, that little of a gap after so many races, Ben. Very nice. Oh, oh actually, see. yeah, I forgot <laughs> Williams. I've got Williams, 79 as well. So, there's yeah, there's eight teams there. I feel sorry for Mercedes and McLaren. Mercedes on 49 and Haas on two. Sorry, Haas was the other one. They're on two. So, I feel, feel sorry for them too, how they're not involved as well. But good stuff. It'll be fascinating to see who gets out on top out of those. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> right. Right. But last but not least is uh, F3, and I will hand it over to, <coughs> to you, Ben. Yeah, so. <coughs> right. Oh, here we go. So, obviously, 
as usual, as uh, many people say, F3 was the best race of the week. And personally, I don't know whether Arguably. you agree. I thought Debatable. that F3 Austria race, which I will talk about, was the race of the season so far. Debatable. Very not debatable. seen it. No, I have seen it. I have seen oh, you it. Have and now, I put you? other races. I put other races into question. I put um, Spain F4, which you commentated on. Clearly, I my put, um... co-podcast commentator is uh, <laughs> on some form of drug, so we'll carry on. Um... It was a good race, but there are there are others. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Lack of poor judgment there. So def def uh... okay, definitely top five. Then shall I just say that? Shall we? Shall we go with that? Oh dear. Right. So anyway, on, carry on. Um... Division 3 for Austria, we were blessed, me and Mr. Alonso, in comms as usual. Uh, qualifying, um, not much to talk about in Q1 and Q2, uh, apart from, I think Duffer had a AI crash which dropped him down the order, but uh, we shall see when I talk about the race if he made it his way back up or not. So in Q3... Out of nowhere, we had Eyes the best on pole, Stigian second, and Patronus third. And I'm pretty sure the top ten was covered by five tenths, Michael. So, <laughs> as usual, F3 is very close, isn't it? That is where you say something. But okay. Um, I mean, yes, I would agree. But then uh, I was. <laughs> Again, I know, I know you're trying to hype up F3. <laughs> God, it's, it's supposedly it's supposed to be close because Austria is a short track, but yes, right, it was okay. very close. Yeah, so start of the race was pretty clean to be honest. Lap one, um, just the odd position change there and now, but overall it was good. Uh, and then we had lap two, we had Stigian and VRC Dan in the Williams and Renault. As ever, they carry on battling at the front. The two who I think will be the Williams title. Renault, yeah. Williams and Renault, I said. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, obviously, they need to uh, outwit one another in the, the upcoming races to uh, get points over each other. So that was crucial on their battles. Um, and then we had a massive, massive battle behind the top three, top four. We had Chrismic, Street Racing, WR Stretch, Manzi, Top Notch and Dangerous Dan. All of them, Michael, were battling for many, many laps, and of course, you could tell by our reaction in comms, it was very entertaining there. So, one second, guys. Something just come up. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so, moving. To, you know, I had a Discord flash constantly then, that was weird. Um, yeah, so into lap six, um, one of the craziest things I've ever seen watching a league race, streaming, commentating a league race was Ooh. we had five cars pretty much go side by side into one corner, which somehow worked and there was no damage, no spins or whatnot, so that was interesting. Um, and then we had VRC, Dan and Stidge battling just behind Patronus and Isaac Best for the lead. And that four car battle, whilst it lasts, was ridiculously close. Then we had a VSC on lap 14, which obviously changed a few of the drivers' perspectives on strategies. Um, yeah, so that carried on. And then lap 21, we had Dangerous Dan's DNF, unfortunate for him. So we had Patronus and VRC Dan, who were battling the net lead at that moment in time and we had camo hunting them down on fresh softs who pitted earlier than i thought he'd expected on that strategy uh Stigian was yet to pit as he was far ahead but wanted to go long on his mediums michael so that was interesting for stitch to go uh -huh. or less laps on the softs um yep so then once Stitch pit in the lead, uh, he would come out roughly around camo and street racing in fourth and fifth to hunt down obviously street racing, VRC, Dan and Stitch for the top three. So it would have been made a five car battle and uh, 
How do I put this politely? We had uh, a five car battle on 20, lap 28. The top five was covered by 1.2 seconds. And then, uh, yeah, let's just say there was a, a big collision between a couple of drivers, which made it humongous because it uh, involved Patronus and VRC Dan just ahead, who were bystanders. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, and then, after all that, carnage and chaos uh, Patronus once again Mr. Consistent in F3 takes the win uh, VRC Dan in the Renault the championship leader got second so that was good for him then we had eyes you say what you say Patronus consistent right I don't know if you uh, noticed this but Dan has had second place for the last five weeks yes I was gonna get into that but you interrupted uh, never mind sorry this, now. What a disgrace you are. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Embarrassing. You shut up. Go sit in the naughty corner. Um, okay. Yeah, so as I was about to say before Brundle ruined it, so uh, abuse him in the chat, guys. Obviously, Patronus took the win. VRC Dan is Mr. Consistent, as Michael just ruined it. Got the uh, second place as the last couple of races. Uh, as the best, very good result for him got third and street racing on his official debut got fourth place so good for him muddy biscuit in the Haas got fifth stygian after that very good qualifying once again dropped down to sixth manzi who i think has improved the last couple of races got seventh k mag in the other williams in eighth duffer in ninth after that horrible qualifying for him and falcon who got driver of the day, made seven places up, no penalties, got the last point. So uh, before I go into the standings bundle, you can talk now. Uh, you, what are your thoughts and review on the F3 race? I think it was good. I think it was very good. Um, again, as Julia pointed out in the chat, it's a matter of opinions. On whether it was a good, one of the best races of the uh, of the league, I think it's something we can debate right at the end of the season because I'm sure there'll be more. But it's definitely in discussion. Um, it, it was good because it was relatively clean apart from the last third, shall we say? We won't talk about it ever again. Um, yeah, it's it, it's good. It's good. It was a good. It's good battling. Um, there was drama when it needed to be. Um, that, as you say, those five cars going side by side, there was a bit of tense, tenseness, which obviously you and Tomo like made it better. For the <laughs> tenseness as well. So, yeah, again, like pretty much all the tears, it has its own story. It's continuing to provide, and that's that's what we like as a viewer. So, keep keep going, keep going. Still a long way to go yet. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, after all that, uh, I managed <coughs> to... Uh, can you cough in silence, please? Thank you. They want the uh, you-know-what. <laughs> um, championship standings, as it stands from Austria for F3. We have VRC Dan on 119 points. Five points ahead of Patronus now in second place on 114, so he has closed the gap. Then there is quite a significant gap in third. Well, Camo takes third place with 70 points, and his teammate, Muddy Biscuit in the Haas, is three points behind him in fourth. Stygian, who I thought would be closer, but due to a lack of luck in some races, gets is currently fifth with 59 points, so he's got a lot of catching up to do to mount a title challenge. Eyes the best in sixth with 44 points. Alco is in 7th on 43. Dangerous Dan is in 8th with 35. And the two Ferraris in 9th and 10th, Chrismic and Duffer, are both 1 and 2 points behind Dangerous Dan. So that's going to be an interesting battle to watch. K Mag in 11th on 26 points. Old Manzi in 12th on 25. So those two again will be close before to the end of the season. Falcon in 13th on 14 points. Hunt. 
The other Mercedes is behind him in 14th with two points. Top notch GSR Hamilton and Optical G are yet to score points. And that is all I have at this moment in time. So, thank you very there much. There we go. Obviously, a little shout out to Street Racing F1 taking his first race in F3. Um, yeah, didn't do anything wrong from what I remember. So, a uh, good debut from Street Racing. And he's seems had the pace to feature as well. So, yep. So, good up. Um, yeah, I think that's it. As as a whole, obviously, it started off pretty badly with no F2 at all. But I think as a whole, I think it was very good, Ben, wasn't it? Yeah, one of the uh, best weeks for podcast reviews, I guess. So, uh, cheers, guys. <laughs> Again, apart from the fact there was no F2. Well, the races that yeah. went ahead, shall we say. Yeah, yeah, the races that went ahead. Um, Yeah, fantastic. Um, Obviously, we don't really have a lot of time to talk about Silverstone, but we can briefly, like, a couple of minutes while we end this. End this off. Um, let's have a look at this. So what are the first things that come to mind when you think about Silverstone, Ben? Very, very fast tracks. So there's going to be a lot of uh, your favourite saying. Apart oh, from yes. one, Apart from contact, your free letter... Not free, free, not free letter, free word free letter. phrase. Three word phrase that you like very much. Oh, There's yes. going to be a lot of it. Not not as much as uh, Austria, but I think the next track that comes up for Frontline Speed will be Monza. Oh, yeah, there's Germany the on the horizon. best race to oh. be in a free and for the whole league, Italy. So watch out for that, ladies and gentlemen. Brace yourself, everyone. Brace for your ears. Brace, brace your mind. Brace everything for that race. Don't wear your phones. Um... Yeah, Silverst Silverstone, though, apart from Monaco, is the one everybody wants to win. Not everybody wants to win, because not everybody's English, of course. We have multi-cultures in our SF1, but it, it's, a, it's a special race, isn't it? It's, um, it's going to be tricky. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind as well for me as well with Silverstone is a very fast turn one. And because it's a very fast turn one, not much braking until you get to like turn three with the chicane, could be tricky going through there, isn't it? Especially if someone is going slower than what you would expect in front because they've had a bad start. Yeah, and no, no stalling. You with your uh, anybody. corner cutting abilities around here that I remember yes, from that. past races. So uh, you need to cut that out, don't you? <laughs> well. <laughs> Well last, well, last season, actually, famously, I actually won on track, but I get, no, I didn't win on track. I lost it on the last lap through Magnus and Beckett's in front of Magic Mark, and uh, had to settle for second. So Oof. I'm keen to right the wrong of last season myself. Stop cutting corners. Um, I, yes, I'm going to try and not, okay? <laughs> I'm working on it. I've actually been very good this season, if you've noticed. So... Mm. You still got penalties, so I've been no, I've been better. I've been better. A lot right? better. I've been yes. better. A lot better. Yes. Still work to do, it's better. Um Yeah, in terms of it's it's a pad not a pad doing it, it's a wheel track, isn't it, really? Especially for the Magnus and Beckett session at the top of the circuit. Which for me personally is one of the very most satisfying set of corners once you get it right. Yeah, it's a lot easier on a wheel for me, I've noticed, but it is one of the most satisfying sections of, well, any part of a track on the calendar. Maggots and Beckets yeah. onto the hangar street. Again, another thing which I don't know why I'm even saying this after you said about my corner cutting stuff, but there is <laughs> there is a line you can take on the on the uh, corner at the end of hangar street. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, though. You I've know what I mean. Everyone that knows in what practices. I mean. <laughs> Everyone does. Everyone I think does. that will be watched by league it. management, though. Well, you can't, you can't watch every single driver for every single lap that they do. No, but you right? can see like the odd person. Like you can go over it slightly. Okay, but okay people that you who can... just con like go flat out, like way wide, yeah. like over two meters wide, then that's just taking the 
to make yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, possibility of rain, big chance around Silverstone. So, obviously, Raikkonen and Unity, the two rain dancers, and <laughs> I guess me as well. Although I'm not really, I'm not really kind of fond of rain around here, as weird as that, as that sounds. So, yeah, it'd be good to see. So, as always, the first race around Silverstone will be the F2 Championship. Hopefully, again, as I said before, fingers crossed we don't have any issues um, tomorrow night. Hopefully, the servers will be thankful. I know, we all know at this point that there is a very uh, interesting race going on at exactly the same time, which is the not Bahrain race which has all the current F1 drivers that are doing an online thing we know it starts at the same point as F2 and we're not discriminating I mean obviously you can watch F2 back anyway so uh, we don't mind if you want to watch that race instead but hopefully you can join us for the F2 championships uh, kicking back off once again around Silverstone tomorrow at 8 o'clock uh, Monday of course is F4 uh, F1 once again on the Tuesday F by Wednesday F3 Thursday and of course any new driver that is coming into the league there are a fair few um, hopefully you can have a good first race in the league if you watch this at any point and basically enjoy it should be quite fun um, I think that's it any any more from you Ben before we finish this off uh, not really um, yeah good luck to everyone in Britain Yes. Good luck to everyone else uh, once again. So at the end of the week, we will be reviewing uh, Silverstone Grand Prix once once again in this podcast. So my name has been RSF1 Bundle. That has been Verstappen uh, with me as well. Um, yeah, until tomorrow. Hopefully you can join us. If not, we don't mind because the other race going on, we know. Uh, but from everyone else here, until next time. Take care, take care of yourselves, and good night.